Today's video is sponsored by Uppercase Designs. What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to paint this bird design. Now, this particular tutorial works in a slightly different way to normal. We're going to end up creating a canvas just like this where we're going to have a reference photo on the left and we're going to have our canvas on the right and then eventually we'll crop it to just your image on the right hand side. Now this particular tutorial runs in two different stages. The first stage is the sketch phase where we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the grid system that we've got here to sketch out the bird on the right hand side. Now that only takes around about 15 minutes. I do urge you to give it a try. It is very easy to participate in and at the very end of the sketch phase, I actually show you how you can adjust your design to actually match up perfectly. So give it a go if you want to. However, if you find that the sketching phase of this is a little bit too daunting. You can download my exact stencil here that I created from the sketching phase and participate from the timestamp in the description down below. Of course, you can grab the palette and the guide as well from my Patreon. It's completely free to participate with and you can follow along with the exact same colors that I've used for today's design. And this whole design works on a premise that you start with basic colors and we build them up until we get to our final result of your very own bird painting. So I hope you enjoyed this type of tutorial. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. And if you want another one, I've actually done a Robin over on my Patreon where I actually post three exclusive tutorials every single month to my Patreon supporters. And the catalog sits at over a hundred Patreon exclusive tutorials. So make sure to check all that out using the link in the description down below. Again, you can grab the palette and the stencil guide for free over on my Patreon. So as always, make sure to trust the process from start to finish take part and also make sure to enjoy it as well have fun creating the design so with all that said let's get started but before we do i want to introduce you to the nimble grip too not only does this grip provide two varying swooped edges for comfort when writing or drawing but this new version has also been engineered around the apple pencils native features it now boasts a new design that includes a flat edge which allows you to use the apple pencils native features such as the double tap feature where you can double tap to switch between an app's tools, for example. And my favorite part, you can now charge the Apple Pencil without having to take off the grip. How awesome is that? Now, if you wanna check out the Nimble Grip 2 for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below where you can find all the different colors that it comes in. And with that said, let's get back to the video. So as you'll be able to see, we're using a slightly different canvas size for today, as well as a grid system. I'm gonna show you how I've set that up. First thing we're gonna do though, is go ahead and go to our layers. We're going to go to our background color and if i go to the value tab here you'll be able to find the hexadecimal code which is e e e 5 d 4 slightly off yellow nice little sort of color to work on so once you set that the other thing you want to do is go up to your actions we're going to go to the canvas tab and we're going to go ahead and add a drawing guide so you're going to want to check that on and edit the drawing guide i've got it set to a grid size of 250. now what that allows me to have is 10 across the top by six down so we can split that five by six for our reference photo and five by six as well on this side. And we can go ahead and hit done. So you just need to set that to whatever gives you 10 by six on your canvas size. Hit done. And now we're pretty much set up, ready to go. But of course we need our reference photo. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our browser of choice. So once you've opened up the link to the photograph, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and hit download. So if you hit download in Chrome, for example, like I am, if we hit download, it will just pop up at the bottom asking you to download it. And what that will do is that will download it to your files. If you're using Safari, it will do the same thing. So once you've hit download and saved it, you're good to go. Now, if we go back into Procreate, we can import that image in. Now we're gonna go ahead now and go up to our actions. We're gonna go to the option of add and we're gonna insert a file. Now, it's, although it's a photo, we do need to grab it from our file. So if we tap on that, You'll then be able to find all of the downloads. So mine opens in Chrome, which is where I saved the photo too. For you, it may be on your iPad and in download. So you just need to go ahead and find it. Potentially recents might be able to help you out there. We're gonna tap on the photograph. It's gonna import it in. And now at the minute we're scaling it. We wanna set it to a correct size. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tap in the top right on this top right node. We're gonna change the size of that to 2035. It will scale up in size. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move it, still holding on to it essentially. We're going to move it so that the top of the head here sits just underneath that top row there. And then the beak, etc., just slightly sort of ends in there. So that roughly sort of gives us the correct sort of positioning for each other. And we can then tap on our cursor when we're done. So this is why we use the grid system. 
And then the other thing we need to do, go to your selection tool, use the option of rectangle. From the top right, drag a box, and you wanna make sure you come one, two, three, four, five across, so right to your middle point. Make sure you try and match up to the line on the grid. And then go ahead and hit the option of the layer, tap on it, and use the option of clear. And now, this is what we match up. So we've got five by six, five by six. So we can draw on one side, and we've got a reference on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. And this is going to begin the sketching phase. Now, if you don't want to do this, as I've already mentioned potentially in the intro, you don't have to do this. You can skip ahead to the timestamp and download the stencil that I meant eventually create. But this part here is learning how to use the grid system and work out how to sort of match up and draw the bird accordingly. So what we'll do is we've got an empty layer. We're going to go to our colors and we'll just go ahead and double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. You can then pick a stencil sort of brush of your choice. Now for me, I always like to use the option of sketching and the 6B pencil. And I've got the size set to 1%. That might be a little bit too small, but what it does is it allows you to, to add varying amounts of pressure and try and build up on top of it. So what we're doing, we're looking at the grid system. We've got the beak here in the first column, second tile, which is roughly here. And you can put like little markers if you want to, little dots here and there just to help you. But we can see that the top of the head runs to around about sort of this point here as well. So I don't want you to try and sort of over detail it at the beginning. We're just gonna try and draw in the beak as we see it and try and just replicate it as best we can. Again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this phase. I can then see that the fur, fl feathers, should I say, starts to take over. I can't get my words out today. So let's go ahead and go along here. And then we can start to draw in other details such as the middle part of the beak here. So this is totally a sort of phase that you can spend a lot of time in and it's up to you how you want to kind of, uh, how long you want to spend on it. But ultimately at the very end of here, we move our stencil here that we're drawing. So our little sketch over the top of the image. And then from there we can work out how good of a job we did and also maybe just continue to make tweaks. So. I don't always want to just provide a stent. I want to, especially in these bird, uh, replicating these bird images, it's nice to be able to also have the option here of being able to sort of really enjoy the whole process from start to finish. And if you've never drawn from a grid system before, it could be a real eye opener for you in terms of replicating other real world content. So I'm constantly looking at the grid, trying to sort of roughly plan out my design and roughly where everything sits. The eye sits roughly around about here. So we're just sketching that in. And it may look a little bit odd to start with, but trust the process, as I always say, we will again move it on cross, across on top shortly, and we'll be able to see how far off we really are. But I think you'll surprise yourself potentially at how much uh, progress you've maybe made by just being able to look across, sort of chuck it in, see if you can sort of round certain elements and match up as close you can to it but it will be you will impress yourself now for example me i can see that the eye is already a little bit off so i'm going to go to my selection tool in freehand just draw a circle around it because we're only in the sketching phase i can tap on the dot grab my cursor and just move it across let's move it into this sort of space a bit more tap on my cursor i can just go ahead and sort of round that off around the back there and you kind of want to start more so with sort of the largest parts so for example this goes right towards the middle of this square. So I can pretty much sort of draw this in. Let's go ahead and round that off a little bit more and let that kind of run off into the middle. And then it kind of starts to swoop down a little bit at a different angle. So we can draw in the back of the head there and it leaves a tiny little triangle in the corner. And that's what you kind of want to look for. You want to look for where it joins a square. So it joins just here and it ends here, which creates this triangle shape. So you can go, okay, I'm gonna take a look at my work and see if I can make sure I replicate that triangle. As we move across to the wings, they start to come across and then they start to eventually start to drop down a bit more. They drop down a bit more of a steep angle. We leave this kind of triangle shape here in the corner and it's constantly making its way all the way down. And in a minute, we'll have to separate the wings as well, which you could start to sort of draw in a little bit. So I know I need to kind of smooth this out a little bit more as well. Let's take a look. So the wings are just here. So we can start to sort of draw that in, sketch that into here. 
and then they come across this corner and then the wings themselves are separated into a couple of different spaces. We've got this kind of shape here, followed then by this shape here. So we want to kind of just draw those in and just start to get sort of a few foundations in play of separating a few elements where possible. That's what your sketch is for. Just like a, a tattoo sketch uh, stencil a lot of the time, it separates a lot of elements that will just help the artist sort of work out um, where things are, where things sort of start and end, etc. And you can do exactly the same here in this type of work where you can just really lay the blueprints for your whole piece. So this part here, these wings that come right down the back of the feather, should I say, just come right over the top of here. And then they swoop down into around about here. And these just keep going. And they look like they come across that corner and they come down into here. Now, bear in mind, we are going to essentially create like a, a border area here. So roughly around about the edge of the sort of frame there, we're going to lose a little bit of content later on in the design. So you don't need to go all the way up to the very edge of the canvas. We are going to end up losing a little bit of that. We'll sketch in accordingly, but we'll see. Uh, we'll just remind ourselves, should I say, that that is going to be a possibility. So let's get this last little bit in here. Let's bring that into here. And then there's some more long feathers here that just run off into the tail, down into the corner. Now you can see my sketch does go all the way down. That is for perfectly fine for a moment. That's looking good. And now what we can do is we can bring the body down. So let's go ahead and go from the top. Let's go from here, scoop down past this point here of this tile. So I always refer to the, the grid as tiles. We're going to come through here. Now it actually needs to be a bit lower than that. It looks like it actually runs into here. So let's go ahead and undo that. And we'll go to our eraser. We'll go ahead and set that to something like calligraphy and the monoline brush just so we can easily get rid of a bit of our stencil should we need to. I keep saying stencil, it's not so much a stencil, it's a, it's a, it's a sketch. So swooping that round. Another thing you could try and sort of draw in here is the log. So it sort of comes into roundabout sort of here and it creates just a straight line, which we can add some detail to in a moment. It goes up to a roundabout there and then it runs. You could almost draw in a straight line if you wanted to hold it down, let that angle kind of match up a little bit and then followed by a little kind of ledge here, which its leg is hanging on to, and then another little bit down here. Now, it's really important to also note with these particular types of designs, I don't want you to replicate the bird absolutely perfectly. We're essentially drawing the species of bird. We're not trying to make sure this immaculately represents or recreates the photograph on the left-hand side. If this little bit of log here, for example, starts to look a little bit different, that's fine. And I also don't really like this area of the log, if I'm honest. I don't like all of this additional texture. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of sort of bring the texture. It's a bit of a wide triangle, whereas I'm now making it quite a flat area. So in here represents all of this. So I'm just going to make an adjustment to it. And that's because that's what I want to do. You know, you can do the same thing. If you don't like a part of a photograph that you're trying to replicate, don't do it. Don't stress yourself out. That's not what this is all about. This is all about testing yourself in a sense that is comfortable, but you don't have to go ahead and draw something immaculately against the photograph. So the bird's body is looking like it sort of matches up quite nicely at the minute. We've then got the legs. So the legs themselves are quite a solid object. So we can make sure that that kind of comes through and it looks like it comes through to around about here. So I kind of need to Take a look at that. I reckon I'm going to get this angle a little bit incorrect, but we'll see once we sort of get to our review stage almost of our uh, sketch. So we've got a claw going over the top here. It runs into these very rounded. They always have like quite rounded knuckle kind of shapes or joints between them all. Um, and I always refer to them as like their digits um, on their feet. So we'll just draw that in. There's another claw here in the middle. So this will take your own time as well. This will take your this will be at your own pace. I can see that this leg is way off, way, way off, because that claw there I was just drawing was too low. So I can see it kind of stays on this line almost for a little bit. 
before it then starts to uh, disappear up into the top area and then there's the rear claw which comes in around about here over and it appears a little bit on there but maybe we'll hide it who knows again you don't have to replicate it immaculately and then the other step then is to go ahead and just make sure we do we carry on the underside here into around about this point here swoop that down and then there's the final sort of tail feathers here that run across so that's looking pretty good now the obviously other thing we need to do is the face area here that runs down into the neck so i can see roughly around about here it starts to sort of block in a little bit and again we're just laying down the blueprint so if it's slightly different that's perfectly fine and i reckon that can come a little bit closer you know we could probably bring that a little bit closer so let's get rid of a little bit of here now what you can then do is once you've got sort of your basic layout of everything and you've got your basic sketch let's then go ahead and put a little dot right up here in the top right little dot there let's then also go ahead and down here in the middle right in the middle put a little dot what that does is that allows your sort of grid here to have a box radius so it's almost the same size as that what we'll do is we're going to swipe our stencil to the left we're going to duplicate it we're going to tap on the top one and we're going to invert it to white if we then grab our cursor you can see it's a box now because it's using that marker and that marker in the bottom left you should be able to just move it all the way across to the left hand side tap on your cursor when you're done and now you can take a look and review now i'm quite impressed actually myself that I managed to get this line almost perfect to the chest. We can then review each area. We can see here that the black is a little bit off. So maybe I could sort of bring that in or I could leave it at the minute and just know that when I get into my painting stage, I can allow myself to use the red and overlap into the black a little bit. The eye is almost perfect. The eye is almost perfect. I'm quite happy with that and I'm also quite impressed. And that's using the grid system. Again, the beak is a little bit off. So we can take a look. I can see that the rear there is a little bit off. This is quite close. That's looking quite good. That's quite close as well. These ones, that's bang on and that's off. So you can take a look at every little element of your design. Now, one thing you can do then is you could either leave that where it is, go back to your black one, make sure your color is still set to black and then make the adjustments. I can see here that the log there at the bottom is a little bit off so I'm going to delete that line and I knew it was off at the time because the foot doesn't have anywhere to sit so I can go ahead now and sort of redo it and give myself a sort of another run through of it so this is where you can start to maybe sort of continue to edit and tweak edit and tweak edit and tweak and see where you go from there I know I can see that the leg there is a little bit off it's a little bit too low so I'm going to go ahead and go back in with it a little bit higher and then when it gets to that part i was all good at that part i can get rid of the top area of the leg and redo that as well that too needs to be a little bit more upright but also a little bit wider i can also see i've missed just this tiny little sort of area here just at the top of the leg where it runs into the feathers there's also another detail that we could introduce which is this area here i can see roughly around about sort of here there's a bit of a kind of swoop down here in some of the feathers. I can also see that there's like a bit of a dark area back here. And this is where we can now start to sort of really patch in a few extra areas. There's a dark spot just under here. So I'm just going to draw in a little sort of patch for it. You can really spend some time really adjusting so many things. So the back area looked fairly close. Maybe we could sharpen it up afterwards. I think that little bit back there just needs to be uh, rounded off a tiny bit more. So I can bring that down and a little bit more onto there. But it's a really good practice and I really enjoy this particular experience of using the grid system, seeing if you can just replicate it and just, you know, again, it's a bit of a challenge. It's a bit of a challenge. I can appreciate that. Another thing you can also do is you could go ahead and go to adjustments and liquify, for example, and use the option of push. I can see my brush size there. I can bring that down a little bit. I can see my beak is just a little bit too high there. So I can just go ahead and push that line inwards a little bit and see if we can sort of get a bit closer towards it. And I can also see that the line there for the chest could just go out a little bit. So 
It's not to say that you need to redraw it every single time if it wasn't quite right first time. Just use it as a challenge. Use it as a guide on that first attempt just to see how close you were to it. And then now you can just make tiny little adjustments to the guide before we carry on into the rest. So I've got to make a few more tweaks to mine before we move on because I'm going to provide this to the rest of the viewers that didn't want to do this phase. But you don't have to keep tweaking this one. If you want to, you can just simply go over to here now, make some adjustments to it, you know, bring the lines in and just tweak up the rest of it. If you've done 90 to 95% of it, congratulations, you did that all on your own. But if you want to get a little bit closer towards our subject here, you can just simply go ahead and just trace those additional changes if you wish. So I've just triple checked and need to triple check that this is looking right and we will carry on from that. So if you decided to skip the sketching phase, we are at the same point now where we should all be painting this in. Now, you will have needed to add in the guide that I provided, which of course was from the sketching phase. And you'll notice there is a black dot in the top right. There is also a black dot in the bottom left. So once you go up to your actions and you hit the option of add and insert a photo, if I go ahead and tap on it, you'll see that there is a box around it. And if you go ahead and go to snapping and turn on snapping and you move it up into the top right, you'll get some orange lines in the top right there to let you know you're right up in the corner. And if you tap on your cursor when you're done, that should now perfectly match up across to our subject. So we can now start painting. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a nice background wash. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We'll create a new layer here underneath our stencil here, our sketch. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the middle color in the far right column. We're going to go to our brush we're going to go to the option of we're going to go to the option of water and we're going to use the wash brush i've got the opacity set to 40 percent i've got the size probably around about let's go a bit smaller than that around about sort of 15 ish percent and we're going to go ahead and not go up to the edges we're just going to sort of bring in a bit of a green wash in here leaving the edges now don't worry if you get close to the edge it doesn't really matter we're going to address that shortly so you just want to kind of leave a bit of a border space around and go over it a few times just to give yourself a nice big sort of wash there in the background, like so. And then you can go ahead and bring the brush size down to say 9%. And you don't need to replicate the photo. This is what I've just been saying a few times in the intro in the sketch phase. We're using the middle color, so we're looking for these kind of tones here and here and here, but you don't need to sort of replicate it. So just like add in a good little wash here. Of color it does not again need to be representative of the photo in any way we're just trying to use it as a reference we're trying to replicate a reference not fully and i like the backgrounds to also have very little detail in them so what i also like to do is wash in the bird as well so give the bird itself a good sort of coat of color because you want to make sure that in the nooks and crannies around it it's got color we'll then switch it to the bottom color in the far right column We'll add in a bit of green in this space here. So a different variation of the green in this space here. And maybe a tiny little bit just behind the bird itself. And then we've got a lighter green in the top right of the palette, which we can then use in the top area and kind of just add in a nice varying amount of green tones to just wash in our background. Build that in, nice additional tones in there. You can go right towards the bottom as well. Use the green maybe just to sort of sharpen up your border maybe. Just make it a little bit lighter on the edges potentially. And that looks pretty good. We're gonna leave that as it is for a minute. We don't need to go any further than that right now. So what we'll do is we'll start painting. So let's create a new layer in front of our background. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here in the top left of the palette. This row all the way up to the pink here is our bird colors. Take a look at these colors. One, so the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. They are super, super saturated and bright. You're gonna have to be really careful when we get to this phase. For now, we're laying down the foundations of the bird. So we're gonna grab the top left color in the palette. We're gonna go to our brush and we're gonna go to the wet sponge. We're gonna set the opacity to 66% and the size probably around about, let's go to about sort of a, a seven or nine percent there. Now, this dark tone primarily sits in this area here, so right on that left edge. So we're gonna we're gonna wash in. Now try and do it all in one movement. Don't let go of the pen on the page. If you let go, you're gonna end up adding in more color. Whereas if you keep going in one brush stroke, you're gonna end up nicely washing it together like this. So you can utilize the brushes and just create like a, a large coverage of this red, but nothing too over the top. If I go ahead and go again, 
you can see now we're starting to load the color in. So we just want to be a bit wary of that at the beginning of this sort of phase. I'm going to bring the color right down. Again, I mentioned in the sort of sketching phase, we're not going to end up going right to the very edge of the canvas. We are going to eventually lose these by erasing a bit of a border here. So just factor that in a little bit in your mind that you will lose that. So I'm just going to go back in again under here once more just to add in another wash of the color and then just essentially try and use the very last of whatever color we've got just to sort of bring the red up the bird like so. And that should just generally give you a good, nice early starting point. Let's try and then sort of factor in a few of the basic areas. So we'll grab the color in the bottom left of the palette, bring the brush size down to around about 4%. We're going to get into this dark area. So we've constantly got our reference photo on the left hand side. I know we of course have the reference tool, but I really like this method of doing it because we can just use the grid as well to take a look at our subject, see where everything's laying on the bird, and then we can replicate that accordingly. And it's good to, again, do things a little bit more manually sometimes, but also have these sort of principles such as the grid system that we can use in our future work. So about 3% brush size now, just trying to go back in and add in some additional tones and this area is very, very dark. So eventually we will have to come back to this and just keep darkening it up. I'm gonna go round in a circle, just round the eyes you saw there a couple of times, just to get that kind of solid shape in there a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. We've got a good start there. Let's then go ahead and go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here, the bottom of the fourth column. I'm gonna zoom in on the beak. We're gonna get the beak in. So using this smaller brush size. Now again, one brush stroke if possible. Get right up to where those previous colors are and we're just chucking in our basic tones to start with. Do not worry if you end up going uh, sort of beyond the sketch. There will be a phase of this where we can tidy this up. Now I'm just gonna jump back to the color in the bottom left again, the dark black color here, just so I can get right up against those red tones and up against the line in which separates the two of them. And if I take a look, there's actually a little bit where this hooks over the top here. So I'm gonna go back to the red, just the second color on my history there, which was the bottom of the fourth column. So bring the brush size down 2% here and just try and sort of bring that in. We wanna make sure that the shapes are there. And if we take a look, I can also see that this red needs to go even closer, if not slightly over the top of some of those black tones. Lovely stuff. Awesome, that's the beacon. Let's then go ahead and chuck some color in the wings as well. So we're gonna go ahead and grab, let's grab this tone here, the middle of the second, uh, middle of the first column. Brush size 4% should do the trick. Let's go a bit bigger than that. Let's go up to around about seven or eight. And let's go ahead and get this circular motion going here with the color and bring in this shape here of the wings. You can see my brush size being a little larger does exceed the boundary of the bird and that's fine for a moment. We're gonna bring that color down, all the way down to the back and just lay some basic color. Now, one thing I think is really important here is to always lay down a darker tone to start with. If you lay down a darker tone, you can always add color on top that's a little bit lighter. If you lay down a uh, too much of sort of a middle tone, you can't build on top of it too well. So I always start, because you can always add highlight on top and that's what really makes all this pop. We're just gonna go ahead and jump to this color here, the bottom of the third column. We're gonna move into the sort of the log area down here, give that a bit of a wash of color as well. Let's chuck that in here. Try and match up if you can to sort of the shape, but it's not critical. Chuck that in there. I'm gonna reduce the brush size down to around about 5%. And I'm gonna really make sure we give this one another good coat, because it's gonna be nice and dark to start with, and then we can add the the wood tones on top, lovely stuff. And if we zoom in, we've got the legs. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab a bit of a light tone. So we're gonna grab this one here, the fourth color in the second row. Bring the brush size down to around about 2% here. And we're gonna get some color into those legs there. Tried to do it all in one motion, but I did have to let go. We're gonna go right up to the end along this back leg here and get all those basics in there. Now we're gonna to start to build in some more tones here. So we're gonna to go to our colors, we're gonna grab the second color on that top row. Four or 5% brush size, I think we'll do, let's go a bit bigger than that, let's be braver, let's go six or seven. We're working in a little bit of like these tones here. 
So I can see we've got a little bit of a color area here. We can bring that over here. We can definitely get right up against this wing because we're going to end up saturating the color in here a bit more. Now, if I take a look, I can kind of see it sort of swoops in here, creates like a bit of a, a line shape here. So I'm just going to sort of vaguely start to sort of patch that in. I'm going to bring that down towards the legs into there too. That's going to be black, that little mark there. So I need to get rid of that in a minute. Bring some color back up the bird again, up into this area here. So I'm going to go over the top. I'm going to go ahead and set the brush size to around about 5% and see if I can very, very lightly, I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve it too well, is we can just sort of color in this area here along this top of the head with this color. Because again, we do not want to get to those really saturated colors just yet to sort of patch this in. Now, if I'm honest, this particular bird it's probably not one that I would do straight away. I've done a Robin, which is a little bit easier on my Patreon, but this one, it's got such bright colors that it's very easy to probably overdo. So just try and sort of, if you want to do another bird, probably do something a little bit less saturated. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump to this color here, the fourth color on that top row. Brush size, six or 7%. We're working in kind of these bright tones here. If we take a look, there's actually a few sort of other factors here. There's like a line here, there's a curve here. So we're going to try in a moment to sort of bring them out a little bit more. So look at how saturated this gets now. So we're going to try and sort of patch in this area here. Just trying to lay again the basics of where we think all those colors are. And again, trying our best to try and do that all in one motion where possible. And it's, it's a really risky game, this one. We can always sort of layer the color on top of it again and take it down a little bit. But, you know, this bird is extremely bright in its colors. So we are at its mercy a little bit. So we've got a couple more bright tones in there. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump back to the first color on the top row. We'll bring that brush size down to about 3%. And we're going to look for some of those somewhat details. We've got a line here. You can see there, there's a bit of a line. There's also that curve. Let's start to just plan that into our design as well. So I've got the brush I set to about sort of a 3%. I'm going to sort of, now I'm in like a dashing line sort of um, approach to it. So I'm dashing in, and this is kind of an approach that we're going to do for the rest of it. So da dashing, creating lots of sort of line marks here, just to create those sort of variations in the uh, feathers. So I can see here that curves round, kind of curves, and then makes its way up towards the back of the head. Kind of just swoops in there you can see there's a bit of darker tone in here just a tiny bit in that space around the eye now taking a look at that is there any other dark tones i want to bring out definitely this little patch here i'm just going to sort of tap away a few times in there i'm definitely going to go ahead and set the brush size to about four percent now and really bring this dark tone down the chest so that was all in multiple strokes but especially this line edge over here now, one thing that will look really impressive and it will really help you later on is if you act, just add in like the odd sort of random patches here. It doesn't necessarily need to match up to the bird itself, but like a couple of dark patches. I can see here we've got a bit of a dark patch just there. Really light with your pressure, just adding in varying sort of tones in the bird. And then when you start to lay the color on top in a moment, it'll all start to come together. So we're just going to keep dashing away and all we're trying to do as well is we're trying to dash away darkening this up here in the movement of the feather so what angle are they going in what what sort of formation are they moving down the body's bird in at uh, the bird's body in i don't know which way i said that round uh, let's go ahead then and just go along here too but constantly just trying to add in all these little sort of dashes and scrapes here and there which will eventually just when you layer the color on top and the bright tones towards the end got these just sitting underneath just these tiny little bits and they will poke through they will poke through um, I'm just going to go ahead and set my color again to the uh, fourth color on that top row I just want to sort of punch in the top of the head here of, with some color lovely so let's go ahead then and continue with that fourth color there Let's bring the brush eyes down to around about sort of a two or three percent brush eyes and we're looking for where these bright tones maybe make their way over on onto the shadow tones so here i'm just adding in a few little sort of scrapes here and there in there i can zoom out take a look at each tile one at a time 
can we go ahead and just sort of replicate a few sort of bright areas here there's a little bright spot here a couple of dashes we can definitely bring some red down here a little bit and onto the leg even though it's not red again when we layer the color on top we'll just have a few nice red tones poking through let's go ahead though and patch in these sort of dark tones again so let's go ahead and grab this color here the bottom left of the palette and we can see just here which is just here on our little sort of sketch we can dash in a few little sort of areas of darkness here in the feather so just a little sort of dark undertones of the body a little something like that so a couple of scrapes a couple of dashes here we've got a little bit of a dark patch that just sits right on the edge of the bird's body a little something like this and we've got this area over here which i've in the stencil itself actually sort of replicated for you so we can bring in this dark tone here down the wing bring that down it pretty much goes all the way down that line and then this little triangular shape here so we can you can probably hear my brush just dashing and scraping dashing and scraping building up some color i can blend on top of the reds just to try and sort of add in some extra detail scoop some round the back of the legs by the looks of it they do kind of swoop round a little bit and we've got some more detail in there that's looking lovely and this dark line runs all the way pretty much up to here so we can sort of scrape that in a little bit more now you don't want to spend too much time on one area so what we'll do is we want to build up all the areas like together we'll go ahead and just add in a bit more color on the top before we move over to the other tones let's go ahead and grab this tone here sorry the fourth color from the right on the top row we're going to set the brush to around about four percent we've got this bright area here and it rolls around onto the top of the head so can we now just kind of start to really lightly and to be honest let's go let's go a little bit more on the sort of safe side let's bring the opacity down let's bring it down to around about 40 percent and repeat so we're going to try in one wash hopefully just to add in a, a bit of a brighter spot and blend it in and then blend in this bright spot here on the back it also i've had to let go it kind of runs over the top of this sort of curving shape that we drew in so it runs around you get a little bit on this edge and a little bit onto the top so just kind of just blending the colors together at this point just spending some time just to try and sort of lay them in lovely stuff let's move on let's go ahead and move into a smaller area let's go into the beak so we're going to go to our colors the beak colors here are these set here so this color all the way through to the uh, orange there it does have a primarily sort of orange tip on the end and a little bit more towards this color here as well so this color that we started with the bottom of the fourth column that's our basic foundation color so we're going to put down this a little bit heavier so we're just going to bring that in just making sure it's got a good coat of color let's then jump to let's jump to this color here the bottom of the fifth column brush three or four percent let's see if we can just add in a little bit on that top area here now the opacity needs to come back up let's go back up to 66 percent sorry and let's go ahead and just add in some more tone in here right over onto the end this is primarily where we're looking for the curve here of the the red tone that kind of sits in this space here up towards the the actual sort of break in the beak the split which leaves the underside which means i can jump back to the bottom of the fourth column and darken that up again so now i'm just trying to blend in these colors to one another there's also some like random sort of dashes and imperfections there um sorry bird to tell you but there's a couple of uh, imperfections there that we can start to factor in as well let's move to the orange though the bottom of the fourth column from the right there's a bit of orange here and also on the end there so we can just sort of bring in a little bit of the orange tone into this corner here of the mouth a little bit as well as on that top edge so i'm going to go ahead and make sort of this point down here on the end nice and orange blend that up and over and it kind of runs in a straight line doesn't it we leave just like a strip here so we can kind of replicate that a little bit leaving kind of like a dark spot in the corner there and I've got like a basic line in there from my sketch. Now you can always turn off your sketch, your top layer and just see how it separates. So potentially you may need to draw in a bit of a light dark line in there. 
I'm going to leave the sketch off for a moment. We're going to jump to this color here, the bottom of the fifth column from the right. Smaller brush size, probably around about 2%. And we're going to very, very lightly just add in a bit of a bright tone on the top edge. Now we don't want to sort of finish this because we want to do everything together. So we want to kind of just lay the basics down of where those highlights are on the top there. I can zoom in a tiny bit and understand that that needs to be sort of squared off a little bit more, which now matches up a bit more to that. I can see there's a little bit of a light patch here on the bottom. So let's go ahead and just try and bring that into play a little bit more right up until the break there. And then on the end, there's just a tiny little bit of a highlight. You can see that just here. So take a look at yours and just see one, have we got enough color in there to start with, like enough orange. If not, you can always jump back to it at the bottom of the fourth column from the right and maybe sort of bring in a bit more orange in here, really punch it in like so. And that looks pretty good. We're gonna leave that again. We don't wanna go too far with it for now. Let's go ahead and move into sort of the eye and that sort of area. So we're gonna to jump to this color here again, the bottom of the first column. I'm gonna zoom in. Now all of this is looking a bit fuzzy and a bit blocky. So let's go ahead and sort of break it down. So it drops down a little bit here. So I can see if I've set my brush size to around about a 2% here, I can start to tap and scrape a few times and break down this edge. So I can just tap and scrape don't worry if you go too far because you can always layer the red on top and that always looks fantastic in my opinion. So, you know, don't worry if you go too far. I can see that the black does sort of stretch across a little bit though. It does sort of bring its way across um, the body a tiny bit more. So we can go ahead and just sort of wobble our pen in here a few times. We can break down, again, feel free to bring in the stencil as well, just in case you sort of need it for any sort of uh, angles, etc. that we are, uh, we don't want to miss from the, the guide. And then here we can sort of bring that color up and around the eye a little bit. There's a tiny bit of color just beyond the eye that goes up onto the top. And here's a perfect example. You've kind of got these little random sort of stray black lines that just sort of make their way up and over and onto the red. And you can kind of just dash in a few up there just to again break that down. And that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Let's try and sort of feather out, no pun intended, a few sort of stray ones here that just run a little bit astray there. There's also this little random little black spot here on its own that we can start to sort of factor that in. A little bit of darkness in there will look great. Again, we can always break it down shortly afterwards. There's also a little bit of a line that sort of swoops up and around the eye. So we can kind of factor that in and that goes all the way up towards the edge. Now zooming in, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my stencil for a minute because it's conflicting a little bit. I'm going to round off the eye a tiny bit more. Just to try and get that sort of shape in there a little bit. Lovely. And I can see that that just needs to somewhat connect a tiny bit here. So taking a look at that, that's nicely broken down. Let's now draw in the eye. So let's go to our colors. Let's go ahead and grab this color here, the top of the second column from the right. We're gonna to wanna to set our brush eyes nice and small, maybe down to our 1%. We're gonna bring in our guide again though. We're gonna zoom in and you should just about be able to see sort of the, the outline of it. So based off the outline and we take a look at the photograph, we can see there is a white kind of beaded line all the way around the outside. It's then black followed by what looks like a little bit of light brown in there and then the pupil. And then we've got this lovely highlight on the top. So we're gonna try and break all that down step by step. So the first one would be the ring around the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and draw in a bit of a circle shape here. I'm gonna to have to go around a few times by the looks of it, because the color is taking a little while to kind of replicate. And we don't wanna make it too bright. So take a look at the opposite side and just triple check whether or not you've made it a little bit too light in terms of the color little something like that. We can then go ahead and set the color to this one here, the bottom of the first column. Zoom in and just make sure that the inside there of the eye is nice and dark. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out again. Zoom back in, I can see that the ring around the top, if I go back to the previous color, back down to that kind of 1% range, just needs to connect across the top. 
we're going to look at that. That now connects. And from there, we can then go ahead. Let's go ahead and grab this color here, the bottom of the second column from the right. Set our brush size to around about 2 or 1%. Let's go a bit bigger than that. And it goes black. So we've got, we've got the white ring, then the, a little bit of darkness right up against the ring. And then here on the inside, we can sort of very lightly just sort of circle in a bit of a kind of eye color to the bird. And you can see by doing that, you also leave then the center a little bit sort of exposed as a pupil. Now we don't want it this light, if I'm honest. Even though on camera, you might just about vaguely be able to see it. It doesn't want to be too heavy. Uh, sorry, in terms of color. So we want to turn that down a little bit. So I'm just going to go over the top of it a few times here just to try and darken it up, get rid of a little bit of the color. But the most important thing is making sure it's just filled in fully. So we're going to go right up against the ring here that we created all the way around, like so. And then very lightly just kind of wiggle our pen all over the top and make sure that the center here is nice and dark because that's our pupil. So I'm going to go around a few times. And then we're just going to go ahead and grab a color such as this one. Let's grab the top again of the uh, second column from the right. And if we take a look at the little bit of the reflection, it's like a triangular shape up in the top right area. So we can do exactly that. We can zoom in. We can go ahead and sort of create a bit of a, a wiggly triangle to start with. So a little bit bigger and then let that kind of drop off at the bottom here. And then you can go back over. Now, the thing with pupils is you don't want to sort of overdo them. You want to keep them kind of light to start with. We can then go ahead and create a new color. So I'm just going to drag this up into the top left. And if I go to my value, you can see it is EAD6CB. We're going to set the brush size a little bit smaller, about 1%. And we're just going to sort of brighten up the highlight in the center. I want it to have a bit more of a white aesthetic to it. And not too bright, but just enough of a quite bright highlight on there. Lovely stuff. Let's then go ahead now and grab our color here in the bottom left of the uh, palette again. I'm going to set the brush size to 1% or 2% and just go into these dark areas now and make sure that they are dark. Because I can see a few of them are a little bit sort of too gray, too green because of the background color coming through. So I'm just going to make sure this area here is genuinely quite just nice and dark, nice and dense and dark. Around the eye here, I've definitely got too much green, which is just throwing it off ever so slightly. It doesn't quite fit um, the photograph, for example. So here, we just need to darken this up. You can also go over your white line as well if you need to and just sort of take it down a tiny bit, should it be required. I can see there's a little bit of space up here that I need to go over and go around the top of the eye a little bit more right up against the guide here that we created of ourselves, the stencil. Underneath here, zooming out, that's looking pretty good. I can see that there's a little bit of a change here that just needs to happen just here, where I just need to darken mine up in this area here. Wiggle my pen along there just to break down the colors a bit more. And you're just looking again for any sort of patches that look a little bit too kind of gray. I can also see here from my stencil that I do need to reinvest some dark tone in this space here because we lost it a little bit. It goes right up underneath and it goes in a nice sort of swooping manner. So we're just going right up against our guide there, adding in all the darkness. Now you will notice there's a couple of very light sort of stray colors here though and just here. So let's replicate them a tiny bit. So they were in the, the corner of the mouth and up there. So we'll go to our colors. We'll grab, say, again, the top of the second column from the right. We'll zoom in, and we're looking at the corner of the mouth here. We just want to kind of dash and scrape, dash and scrape again, just trying to add in a few variations here from memory. Yep, that looks pretty smart. And then there's a couple just up in here too. A couple of sort of variations in there. Imperfections. Again, sorry, bird, I keep calling you out, but there's a couple of imperfections in there. And other than that, that looks pretty good. Let's then go ahead and do a little bit more work on the wings. So we're going to take a look at the wings. Now, the wings themselves have got a couple of different tones in there. We've got this color and this color to work with primarily. So we're going to grab this color here, the middle of the fourth column. Brush size can be set to around about 3%. And we're going to sort of try to replicate these kind of shapes here. There's a, a swooping layer here. They're almost layered on top. There's almost like a layer here. And then there's a layer here. And then, of course, you've got the main wings a little bit lower as well. So we're kind of replicating those three uh, phases of the wing. 
So here, I can see that the top layer kind of starts around about here. Let's make the brush size at about sort of 5%. I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 50 on this occasion. And I'm just going to swoop that down into here. And I lightly just paint on top of the color that we had before. Try and layer in that initial sort of color. I see there's also a bit of a shape there as well. And then we've got the other sort of phase of the wing a little bit lower here as well, which kind of comes in a little bit like so. And then you end up with a bit of a red patch in there. Now I can add some more red tones in a minute. It's just these tones here, just to try and lay out the shapes a bit better. And in fact, we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna go ahead and let's grab the color here, the middle of the uh, first column. We'll bring that brush size down to a very small size, about one or 2%. The opacity is quite low for a minute. We're gonna take a look and try and replicate these lines here. So there is one line, which is just here, which comes in, which is fairly dark. And that runs roughly around about here. And that runs down, right down towards the line here of our guide. Now, to be honest with you, you could probably go a bit darker than that. So we will, we'll go in the bottom left of the palette and we'll go over the top again just to darken that line up. We've got a low opacity still, so we can really build up the color. And then just besides that, you've got like a little bit of a triangular line here that comes in, which is identified just here. And we've still got this really lovely dark line here that runs along here, but then it leaves this one strip, doesn't it? It leaves this one light strip of color. So you've got the dark line, which runs, and then you've got a light strip. So zooming in on the guide, for example, there is a line here. So if we go ahead and go to our colors, let's go ahead and grab, say this color here, the um, middle of the second column. In this area here of our guide, we can just run in this color and really bring that line back out. So we're gonna bring this line in again. You see how bright we're slowly starting to get? I'll undo that one because I tipped my pen a little bit too much there. I'm gonna bring this in all the way down and you can see if we take a look at our guide it runs all the way down to literally the edge of the fourth column here and that's on our little guide as well so we can just run this beautiful bright line in let's drop it or bring it up should i say about up to 66 percent just so we can really drop in some color really brighten that line up and then we can switch back to our shadow color the bottom left of the palette and there's that dark strip just above it so now we can sort of sandwich that line a little bit more with the dark line that runs all the way down to around about here. And that is again represented in the, the guide as well. So that runs all the way down to here. Bit of a tricky element to try and fit in. But again, you've got your guide, you've got the, the actual sort of grid system as well to be working with. So you can see everything that I can see. We'll run that up to there. And then what that allows us to do is also in a minute help separate some of these wings, which I think we'll actually do now. So we don't need to count them necessarily, but there are three here that go up to this edge of the wing. So if we can try and accommodate for three lines, that'd be great. So let's draw in some really light lines and they run down into kind of a grouping a little bit sort of towards this point here. So a line up into here, we'll draw in another line here. And of course that separates the three. And then this line is almost the second chunkiest sort of dark line here. So that can run a little bit lower into here and then it gets really dark and a bit wider as well. So we can really chunk out this line, bring that one down into there. And then let's just make sure that the previous line is a little bit darker, which it is. We can then go ahead and just continue just to create feather lines. And this is what I'm talking about previously is you don't need to keep making sure that the the, in, in the sort of painting that you're creating is perfect to the photograph. It does not need to be that at all. Just drawing in some feather lines. You're essentially drawing in, and again, if you miss this in the stencil phase, the, the species of the bird. Okay. We don't want to draw in everything immaculately to the bird. By all means, if that's your goal, that's your goal. But for me, it's not. For me, it's just making sure that we nail the species of the bird down and just, again, continue to sort of increase our sort of um, skill set. So drawing in those lines allows us to then see that this line here gets a nice dark collective when they all start to sort of blend together. 
So I can just kind of bring that into play where all of those lines kind of just join into there and they all kind of break into one sort of space because this carries on a little bit lower, but we can only identify that in a minute by some nice light lines. So we're gonna bring a line a little bit further down and we've got some good foundation there. We can also lay down the foundation for above as we were previously doing. So again, we've got this line here and I've got you to do the ones below because of the way that they layer on top of each other. We can now go ahead and start to sort of draw in some feather lines here that sort of create a bit of a, a bit of a ledge on top of um, the lines that you just previously created. So I'm keeping my pressure nice and light at this point, And I'm just trying to make sure I get the angle of the feather lines more than anything. And again, I'm not interested if there's six or seven and I've only drawn, you know, five or six. It, I couldn't care less, to be honest. It's more a matter of just making sure we get all of those sort of details in there more than anything. Not so much an accurate detail of the quantity. Now I'm lightly just going to wobble in my pen here just to separate them a tiny bit more from each other. Again, I mentioned this in my live stream when I drew this. We can take as many artistic liberties as we like. OK, we can create whatever we want and especially towards the end, we will. But right now we just want to sort of layer this all in. Um, here, there's not really much going on now, so we can just sort of lightly just sort of dash in a few sort of lines here, just running down in a bit of a. These are super, super gentle lines. If I zoom in for you, you can see the aesthetic of what we're creating here. I'm just running in some lines here just to kind of show the motion of the feathers, how they sort of direct their way down the uh, down the, the, the bird. I'm looking for this curve shape here. And if we notice, there's also this little line here and that little fella just runs in a little bit over here. So I'm gonna set my brush size a little bit larger, maybe a 2% here and just sort of curve in a dark line. I can always overlap it again with my reds in a minute because that is fairly strong. And then just at the back there, I can see there's a couple of little sort of stray feather lines in here. So again, I can start to kind of draw in a few little details. And you'll notice we are slowly but surely starting to build up the detail and sort of what we're looking for in the detail as well. A couple of lines up the back there of the neck. Again, I can see that that ends up with a little bit more of a darker tone in there. So maybe I can dash in a few red, uh, dark sort of black tones in the reds. And for a minute, that looks pretty good. Let's carry on though with the wings because we want to sort of separate these a bit more. So let's go to our colors. Let's go ahead and grab uh, this color here. Let's grab the uh, middle of the uh, fourth column there. Brush size set to a one or two percent. And we're going to separate a few of these lines. So we can run our pen down some of these lines on in the gaps, which is now going to start to bring them out. We're going to separate them from the shadow lines. You're going to overlap your shadows ever so slightly. So you're just drawing in the gaps, but ultimately you're, you want to kind of be drawing a tiny bit on top of your feathers. They all run into this point here. I can see if I just layer in some white to start with and bring this one in as well, that kind of comes in and then fades away. I can see that the kind of fourth one along roughly is a little bit brighter. So I can factor that in into my work. And I can see they also go from like a orange into the light tone into the red. So let's do that. Let's grab some orange, say this color here, the bottom of the fourth column from the right. We'll add in a little bit more color in them. Try and sort of fade in a bit of color on top of these ones. Let that white one live a little and then set the red. So the bottom of the, in fact, let's go to the top of the fourth column, sorry. Let's put in some red in here as well. Kind of brighten them up a bit more as well. Lovely, that's coming together. And then they all run into a white tone. So we'll go to, let's go ahead and grab a, this color here, uh, the middle of the fourth column. And we can see they all run down into this kind of light tone just down here. So we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna run down into a point and then we're gonna break off all of these lines. So we can probably bring our brush size down to around about 1% here and kind of conjoin all of them and make sure we color this in. And also on the top edge of this here, we can go ahead and add in a nice light tone because although it's a shadow on the underside, on the top side, it's nice and bright. So let's go ahead and just make our brush around about 2% here and just come down the top of that line. Don't worry if you go astray slightly, it's fine. 
bring in a little bit of a bright tone into here. Lovely. And that's starting to come out a little bit more with separating all those sort of details there in the wings. They will come out a little bit more towards the end. And overall, that's looking pretty good. Now, before we move into sort of these latter areas down here, I want to carry on with the bird. I'm going to turn off my stencil guide for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the bird layer. And we're going to just start to sort of patch in the brighter tones here. We're going to have to start getting brave with it. So we're going to go to, say, the red tone here, the top of the fourth column. We can see how bright and red they are in these areas here. So let's set the brush size to around about sort of 3% and start to sort of dash in all these reds. They kind of run a little bit over the top of sort of the wing here in this area. We're going to start to dash in these areas here too. Dash in on top of some of those dark tones again to just layer on top all the kind of feathering. I'm going to continue a little bit up and around onto the top of the head just so we can build up the color. I'm going to go ahead and set the brush size to a little bit of a smaller size because what we're going to start to do is we're going to start to be a bit sort of detailed with it now about one or two percent brush size and just kind of scrape in some dark lines that run over uh, some light lines over the top of the dark ones with just a few little sort of feather lines and they're going to be these scratchy kind of little lines like this okay and when you layer on top of a shadow like so they are even more visible so you can go ahead now and just kind of just dash in little random lines that just run all the way down the body. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Although we want to replicate the bird, I want to also take some artistic liberty. So I know that there's lots and lots of stray little lines here and I'm not going to get you to match up every single feather. We don't want to do that. We're just going to go ahead and replicate it as much as we want to, but also in a style that we want to. So we're going to run the red up towards some of these edges here as well in the top area, but also at the bottom, as I mentioned, we're going to just scrape in a few lines here over the top of this dark patch here too before we start to move into some of the other tones, the brighter orangey tones. Here we can go ahead and just, just dash in a few lines that just very, very small little dashes and imperfections that run over the top of the dark tones. So we can go ahead and just sort of dash in a few here where they're just the black and the uh, red transition into one another. Okay. And that's really where this skill set comes along quite a bit is where you can transition the colors. Let's go to the fifth color on that top row. We are getting really bright now, so please be wary of that. Potentially lower your um, opacity if you need to. I've got a 2% brush size, two or three. Um, let's go ahead and continue to brighten up this area. So we're looking at this kind of top area really of the bird. A couple of these run a little bit lower down into here. In a couple of areas here you can also just really patch in some areas if you want to you can always go over the top of them again in a minute i can see that there's a few sort of orangey patches down here in the belly area and again the odd little random stray line over the top of the dark tones will look great you can bring the brush size down to like a small one or two percent if you really want to spend a lot of lot of time in here there's a little bit of a patch here that i can see I could probably start to build out. It's not super, super bright, but again, we want to kind of, we kind of want to go past the color, really. We kind of want to boost the sort of saturation and also the contrast almost of the bird. So this is why I'm sort of layering this on top now. And even on in some of the shadow areas, I kind of want to sort of bring out a few of the, the highlights a bit more. Again, take that little bit of a liberty. We're building up the detail, okay? building up the detail now one thing you always have to take a look at with like a real world photo is the edge you know we can go ahead for example and just run this down here a little bit down the edge of the body just a tiny bit just to bring in some more color i can go ahead then and up here really kind of add in lots and lots of dashes lots and lots of dashes your um canvas will have a nice high uh, paint stroke count for this one Let me know on Instagram if you tag me what your brush count was, your brush strokes for today's design. We've then got a couple more. They start to run a little bit sort of more horizontal in this space here. So we're just going to continue that fashion over the top of that dark line that we initially set. Because look at how many random odd singular lines just run over the top. And that's exactly what we want to try and replicate now. So we're just running a few of these over here. I can see we get into like, we definitely get into like a really large 
orange area. So maybe I can set the brush size to like a 2% here. Almost kind of squiggle my pen in here and try and sort of bring in a little bit more of those orangey tones that definitely run in behind the eye a little bit, down into there, a little bit over the top too. We want to sort of show the brightness, how it rolls around on the top of the head. Lovely. And let's go ahead and get a little bit sort of brave over here for a moment, just laying down some um, oranges that we can build on top of in a, in a second. So we're laying in some oranges there. They're all layering. Add in a little bit of color on there too. And then what we'll do is we'll switch our color. We're gonna go ahead and move to this one just beside it, the top of the sixth column. Probably a similar-ish brush size, around about two or 1%. Let's go ahead then in this over here on the right-hand side, layer in a few of these tones. So these ones are a little bit less saturated, uh, but a little bit whiter almost. And we will implement whites in at the end. I can also see that we didn't add in the stray um, sort of odd couple here that run off the back of the head. So we'll do exactly that now. Let's make sure we add in a, a lot of color on the top edge of the head. Lovely stuff, that detail's really starting to come out. Let's go ahead then and change it to this one here, the top of the fourth column from the right. This primarily needs to sit on the very right edge over here. So go down this edge to start with and then blend it across over and in towards the rest of them. So dashing and scraping, dashing and scraping. And sometimes I think people overthink these sort of elements too much. Like you don't need to sort of meticulously stroke in each individual one. Just let your hand do the random jitters and whatnot and just allow it to sort of, as long as you're running in the same sort of flow as the sort of fur, fur or feathers, whatever it is you're drawing, it, it still works. You don't need to sit down and meticulously draw element after element. I'm going to bring the brush size down to around about 2 or 1%, really small now though, and go right over the top of the head, adding in a couple of little scrapes again on the top of the head just to show the odd little random area of, of the feathers and running out of um, uniform a little bit. There's also, once we get into the highlights, there's two little sort of C shapes just here. Can we sort of round these into the, the shape? We most definitely can. So we can round in a few of those. Adding in all the detail. I'm going to set the brush size to around about two, a larger 2% now. And run in a few more sort of strokes over here. A few more feathers here and there. And again, this is where we can slowly start to maybe bring out a few of these dark tones by layering on top. You know, contrast creates depth and you can do exactly that. So we can add in random patches here or maybe we want to just take a bit of a liberty as I mentioned and just add in a couple of scrapes in the red tones to build them out a little bit more and then down here we're going to have to start to utilize this color here for these kind of swoop lines here so they kind of swoop around a little bit nothing too sort of bright though if you can help it a couple that just run a little bit over the top of the dark tones a couple in here too and they run right up against the edge of the leg there so i can see that we kind of brighten up here on the leg you may need to turn on your stencil guide if you need to at this point just to bring in the leg again and um, we will leave a few of the edge highlights for a moment at the minute we've really stepped up the level which is great and um, we've really sort of jumped to that next part almost of the design so i'm going to just utilize that now by bringing in this bright tone here that comes down the back of the wing and I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to go too much further down there. And I want to definitely make sure that I've added in a good solid amount of this color up on this top edge. Because we do have white tones to add in later. But for now, these ones will act as our brightest tones on top of the bird. Now we do need to jump back though. We need to jump back to our base color here, the top left of the palette. And get back into our shadows now and start to scrape in and dash in down here. It's almost like we've lost a little bit of detail here. So... Let's in fact jump to the fourth color on that top row. Let's add in some more red strokes unnecessarily almost in a way in the shadow areas so that we can then build on top with the dark tone again. So we're gonna build in some reds down here very, very lightly, lots and lots of these little sort of scrapes here. Okay, lots and lots of these little scrapes. All the feathers because then we can go ahead and jump back to the dark tone top left of the palette and now we can patch in the areas 
where we want to really bring out the shadow tone. So there's like a little bit of a patch here. And you can just pound in the dark tones here, but anything that you leave now will have a little bit of a detail of the feathers, etc. Let's not forget like there is a couple of patches in the reds as well, where we can dash in and add in some dark tones again. So darkness on top of light tones, darkness on top of light tones and so on. With digital sort of art here, you've got so much more freedom to do such things as that. You won't be able to do that necessarily in traditional sense because of how the paint layers on top. You may not be able to expose the color again, but the way that this all works, you have all of that artistic liberty to do exactly what you want with. So taking a look at that, the bird's bodies. Now I've got some beautiful bright tones in there. Very nice and orange in a sense, which I quite like. We're then going to go ahead and start to detail a little bit more of the wings. So we're going to go back into those now. And a few of those areas, to be honest, just need to move straight to the brightest tone, which is this one here, the top of the third column from the right. Again, making sure we're still on that same one layer. We're going to go ahead and just brighten up the top edge here of the wing. So I'm going to bring the brush size down to a 1% here, brighten that up down here. I'm going to re-brighten up a few of these in here too, making sure that that fourth one that we mentioned earlier has a bit of colour in here. And these wings just have a nice layered effect to them. I'm trying to sort of brighten up a few of the lines here and there where I can see that they run in and hide away. And a few of these little wings here, the little, sorry, wings, the feathers, should I say, sorry. Um, they have like a little bit of a highlight on them just to nicely separate them from one another. So let's do exactly that. That's looking quite nice. Let's bring the brush size up to a 2% and maybe try and sort of bring in that triangle shape here. And it looks like we actually need to add in a little bit of an orange tone. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll grab uh, this color here, the top of the sixth column. We'll bring the opacity right down though to about 25%. And we'll just go ahead and sort of try and overlay multiple times a little bit of orange in there. In fact, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up to around about 44% here. Bring in some orange tones in here over the top. A little bit in there too. And then there's a little bit of orange on the ends of some of these wing uh, feathers. I keep saying wings and I'm sorry. A little bit of orange in there, which nicely kind of blends the two sort of spaces together, doesn't it? A little bit of color on there. And they could definitely do with being a little bit brighter, but I want to leave the highlights towards the end. We will go ahead and try and fix this bottom area, though. So let's go ahead and sort of take a look at that. We've got some quite muted tones to add in there. So we're going to go ahead and grab uh, this set of colors sort of in the middle here. So we'll grab this color here, the middle of the second, uh, middle of the first column, second color. Size is about sort of 4% and the opacity goes up to 66 again. We've got these kind of dark points here on the end. So we're going to try and sort of patch them in to start with. So they kind of run into here, don't they? And they do somewhat run underneath. So we can just kind of darken up in here as well. We will go ahead and grab a tone such as this one here, the middle of the third column. Brush size around about 2% now. And we will run this across here trying to replicate that little underside again in this corner i'm not too fussed necessarily because it's going to get sort of chopped off shortly um we're going to get kind of the basics in here but the underside here i'm not too stressed about to be honest so i'm just adding in the center area there of the the tail we've got a nice sort of roll round of the colors here on the right hand side where we roll into like a ready orange so we'll grab that color we'll grab the red at the top of the fourth column go ahead and Add in some red on there to start with that runs up to the back area here a little bit too. We could probably add a little bit of red down here too. And this is all fairly dark in here. So once we've added in some color such as, I think we could probably leave it as that. We'll go ahead and grab the color in the bottom left again, the darkest tone. Bring your brush up, but bring your opacity down to say 30% and just layer on top of this a few times for me just to sort of mute these tones, darken them up a little bit, take away a little bit of the focus away from them as well. Like I just want to kind of darken them up and hide them almost because I'm not too fussed about them. We want to focus on this area here though. So we're going to go ahead and grab like a nice color such as this one here, the top of the fourth column from the right. Brush size about 3%, back up to the 66. 
we've got this kind of like peachy kind of tone here. So let's go ahead and kind of work that in. Let's bring in our stencil again, just so we can see where our limits are. And now I can much easier see where we need to run up to in order to replicate this space. It was something like that. And then we can go ahead and switch it to like a lighter tone, such as the color just beside it, the top of the uh, third column from the right. And we're going to go ahead and brighten up the end there, brightening that up, adding in a bit of a brighter tone. Now, there are certain areas, like I said, in this particular one that I'm not too fussed about, and one of which is kind of back here. I want the main body and the head, etc., to be the focus, because again, we're going to probably take out a little bit of color from down here in a moment. We're going to go ahead and set the brush size to about 2% though and just run down this line. Now what we're going to then do is we're going to go to our eraser, tap on our eraser and change it to the option of water and the wet sponge. Maximum opacity, but a very small size, probably around about 2%. I want you just to sharpen up this corner down here. So just sharpen up this area here, get rid of any excess and make sure you've got these lovely blades so you're going to need to kind of alternate between your stencil and your uh, just your layer and just try and tidy up and sharpen up any of these lines here as they kind of run into the back of the bird. We just want to tidy that up. Likewise, under here, too, we can sharpen up under here. You can bring in your stencil if you want, but I know what my kind of objective here is, and it's just to kind of create some sharp lines in that underside there. But if you do have the odd little sort of stray as well, a little bit further up, you can always tidy that up as well. So this is quite an important phase in a, in a way because we can get rid of any excess that just ran astray a little bit too much from the actual bird's body. So I'm just looking for any sort of imperfections that run a little bit wild, a little bit far beyond the body. Tidying up as we go. And that's looking lovely. And I'm really pleased with how this is coming along now. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of work on the legs and the log at the bottom. So let's go to our colors and grab this color here, the, the middle of the second column from the right. Let's go ahead and turn on our guide again and just take a look at the log. You know, we're just going to very lightly just sort of set our brush size around about three or four percent and just create streaks after streaks here. And uh, there's a little bit of sort of brighter tone on this edge. I do not want to spend time on, on this, to be honest with you. I, again, I said it at the beginning, I'm not fussed about this area here. I just want to make sure that it's detailed and crispy, but it's not too overdone. So I've set my brush size to about a 1% now just to try and draw in some streak lines here on top to try and draw in some nice variation here in the wood and the, uh, the carving of it and the, the structure and the texture. Some nice bright tones towards the top edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my color to this color here again, the bottom of the third column. And I think I'll probably just kind of darken up on the inside here. So really pressing quite firm here, going over with multiple coats just to make sure that the top inside there is nice and dark. And then I'll run some like streak lines here. So like breaks and splits in the wood that run a little bit lower down. You can run some through your highlight tones as well if you really want to sort of break them down, create grooves, create breaks all this kind of detail and texture, just to break it all down a bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and set the brush size to 3% and try and build out that top shape a little bit before then layering on some highlights. So we've got kind of that basic shape there, which I can then go to my colors and grab, say either this color or the middle color. I'll start with the middle color. We'll go ahead and set the brush size to about 1% and we're just gonna lightly just go over the top. Now you may again need to go through that sharpening stage again. So using the eraser, you'll be able to just sharpen up the top of this edge as well in a moment. Just take that down a little bit. I'm going to go along kind of the top area here a tiny bit just to try and sort of sharpen these up a little bit more, give them a bit more crispiness. Again, I'm not too fussed because we're even going to lose the very bottom edge as well. So it really will get destroyed. I wouldn't spend too much time in here. A couple of straight lines in there. And to be honest, this is probably something towards the latter stages that I'll probably come back to, depending on the detail level of the rest of the design to see if I think, hang on, maybe I do need to add in a little bit more. I will go ahead, though, turn off my stencil, grab my eraser and again, just get in here now and sharpen the edge up. So let's set the brush size to about 2%. Let's go around this edge. Really hack away into it. 
sharpening it up though at the same time so we're sharpening up the edge there sharpening as we go and then you created your uh, little bit of wood there that the bird is stood on now we can go ahead though and add in some brighter tones such as the top of the second column there from the right making sure we're back with our brush which we are we can go ahead then and intro introduce some brighter tones in here so we can streak in randomly but following the grooves and somewhat the nature of the photograph and then also brighten up sort of the, the edges as well a tiny bit so a little bit on that top edge a little bit on there i'll add in like a lovely bright patch here a couple of random scrapes 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 and scroops and all those words that you can think of to just replicate the wood and a little bit on that area here maybe a, a bit of a brighter spot inside there maybe a couple of random little spots of random lighting and that's cool that's all we need to do for that because again it's going to get cut off anyway let's just do the legs now as well so we're going to zoom in on the legs we're going to take a look at the opposite side and we're going to see that they're primarily like a pink tone followed by like little random accents of lighting on it so we can go ahead and use this color here the middle of the fourth column let's bring back in our stencil again and let's just make sure that we've just packed in a good solid sort of pink foundation here, even in the claw on the end as well. And also a little bit here too, making sure that's nice and detailed. Now you left this to the end because you want the leg to of course sit on top of these tones underneath. So setting this like this, you now have that kind of layering of the two different areas, the body and the legs. If we set the color then to say this color here, the top of the third column from the right, you can see there's essentially just random little grooves, all the creases, all the sort of uh, quite ugliness really of the legs. Sorry, bird, I'm absolutely slaughtering you in this one, but you can see that there's lots of sort of uh, random little sort of thin areas and grooves, etc., and all the kind of areas. So I'm just trying to somewhat replicate that a little bit with like a few little lines here and there. Brush size set to 1% now. A little bit sort of on the top there and then random little areas just little patches of lighting if i can i also want to then switch this to say for example let's grab uh let's grab this color here the middle of the third column i'm just going to separate the the front from the back here with like a little bit of a darker tone in there and you can also run a few little random darker tones in these sort of textures and grooves etc of the legs I urge you to spend a little bit more time, to be honest with you, than I'm spending on the, the feet. My sort of mindset with this is I don't, we want the body and again, the head and the face, et cetera, to look really, really nice and sharp and detailed. I'm not too fussed about sort of the leg areas. I don't particularly enjoy drawing them, if I'm honest as well. If we change our color quickly to, let's grab the bottom here of the second column. We'll just add in a bit of a darker tone underneath them just to kind of show how they're just like resting on the the the, the uh, log here a little something here a little bit of a more darkness in there and maybe the odd tiny little sort of random scrape here and there to introduce some additional darkness so not accurate in any way but not really something i'm interested in drawing now if I go ahead and turn off my guide just to triple check that I'm kind of happy with it, I'm not quite because it doesn't quite connect. So we're just gonna go ahead and just kind of connect the two together in the wood here, just kind of create like a dark patch underneath. So you can see how much of a liberty I'm taking now is just by simply just drawing in a straight line that runs underneath the two areas of claws that are nice and dark. And that's it, that's just enough to kind of make it attach to the log. And Maybe again in my own time, I'll come back to this. Now taking a look at the bird, there is just a kind of final accents of highlight really. So if we go ahead and go to our colors, we're gonna start with this color here. I'm gonna go ahead and on the value tab here, let's just increase the brightness up to around about sort of 95%. So we grab this color here, top of the second column from the right, go to value and then drag the brightness up to 95%. This is going to be your highlight tone. So what we're going to do is we're going to run around the body. You can see here towards the bottom here, we've got kind of these, the lighting bouncing around from the opposite side. You've got a little bit of highlight here too. There's a little bit of highlight that runs down here as well. We can see it runs on the top edge. Again, this is going to get cut in a minute, so that's fine. 
going to run this. So this is those final levels of sort of highlight and detail that we can add in that really helps everything pop. It really helps everything brighten up, really shows the level of contrast. I'm adding a little bit on top of some of these lines here of these um, areas of the wings just to kind of bring out a few of these little strokes in here of the of the feathers all layering on top. So I'm just lightly giving them a bit of a coat on top each one. I can see that there's a little bit of a bright area here just at the back that can be represented here. And essentially that runs all the way up now. So we can come back down here, adding in that little bit of a bright highlight on the edge down here. Lovely stuff. It's nice and bright though, isn't it, in here where the feathers will start to get really, really thin. So again, we're at 66% and a 1% brush size. We're just going down this top edge all the way and we're going to really brighten up that top layer up here it goes all the way up the back of the neck doesn't it all the way up into the bird you can lightly then sort of wiggle your pen in towards the sort of the body as well and introduce it some occasional little you know bright tones in here we will come back to that in a moment it runs all the way up underneath some of those light strays and then i can just very lightly just go over the top of those a little bit more i can just get rid of a, a little bit of the red and add in this bright tone right on the top of the head and it's these final levels of the brightest tone that you should always keep to the end you don't want to be doing it in between and then what we can do is we can take a artistic liberties add in a few little sort of random random little marks in here just a little random feather or two just catching a bit of light i think they always look wicked bring it back down to a one percent though we've got a little bit of sort of a little bit of highlight accent there and to be honest i'm going to draw it inside the dark area then switch to the eraser and just get rid of up to there so that the highlight now is right on the very top edge we've got the beak we've got a lovely bright little spot there on top of the beak we can introduce that runs all the way up and into the actual skull itself followed by probably a little bit more of an accent of a highlight here as well and a tiny bit that runs on here too followed by another one just in there lovely we've also got random accents of highlight down here as long also along with some sort of strays as well some stray little lines here and there so we can Sort of wiggle them in a little bit break down that black sort of border there and then i will sort of follow along a little bit with that so i'll come down here there's like two patches here so we can follow this line all the way down to around about here where we end up with another bright patch and another bright patch here so that's just adding those little accents to the the edge of the bird here we've got actually like a cluster of fur here and it's bright white so that's why we left it towards the end there's like a couple of, I say fur, didn't I? Sorry, a couple of feathers. Apologies if I've said anything like that. I start these every time I've just finished work. So for me, I've, I'm in like two different mindsets. There is a line that runs across here. So we can go ahead and just kind of swoop that in a little bit here too. A little bit of an accent. And we've just done a whole loop. We can brighten up on top of here, on top of the leg. Or we can say that, see that there's a few sort of bright spots that run into there. Taking a look at that, that looks lovely. Can we go ahead and accent anything else? To me, that really helps it pop. It really pops off now. And you can take a look at the whole design. Set your brush size maybe to a little bit bigger, like 2%. Can you sort of blend in these highlights a tiny bit more? Like on here, I definitely can. So I'll bring the brush opacity down to 40%. And I'll just go ahead and lightly, hopefully with one wash even, just kind of wiggle in these bright spots on the top edge here. And just really blend in that kind of bright highlight in and onto some of the wings. Um, here it doesn't need to be quite as dark as it is, so I can go ahead and just patch in a few areas of color here. Where else can we do that? We can probably bring the brush size down to about 2%, back up to about 66, and can we get really sort of take artistic liberties? I'm not even going to look over there now by just adding in some occasional little areas of feather that we want to kind of highlight, almost accent with a little bit of brighter tone to it. So at this point is where you can then start to stray a little bit. You can really kind of say, okay, I want to add in little areas of feather here and there that just catch in some light for some reason, just little random 
pressing really, really light with my pressure. And I, to me, this is where I start to add my own flavor on top of this, you know, the occasional little area of highlight in the feathers that just, I, it gives it a real beautiful painting look to it. And to me, it's that's the final touches that I really, really enjoy. So, you know, you may or may not want to do this. You may be happy with the fact that you've replicated it sort of quite perfectly. I'm really in, sort of into the fact that we can just uh, build on top with some artistic kind of flair. Because again, it's just a piece, isn't it? It's just a piece that you're working on. It doesn't have to be, um, it can be whatever flavor that you prefer of, you know, your art style. A couple of little extra lines in there, maybe just to break that down a tiny bit. I'm gonna wiggle my pen over there. Can I go ahead and maybe introduce like a, another little random sort of stray or two from that side, just to add in some natural unevenness, a little bit untidiness almost. I'm going to make sure that the top of that little flick there on the top of the head's lovely and bright. Lovely stuff. Let's bring the brush size down. Let's go down to a 1%. Let's just add in accents here. Little dashes in there. Maybe a few round the round the eye, maybe. Brush size maybe up to around about a 1 or 2%, maybe. Lots of maybes. Overlap some of those shadow tones just to kind of break them down a little bit if you don't want them as bright as they are. And then end up with some lovely detail. And I, I just like the aesthetic of this. I like it. I know it sort of goes against the photo a little bit. Now, as I mentioned earlier, what we can also go ahead and do is we're going to tap on this layer. We are going to mask it. We're going to make sure we're on the mask. and Our color is set to black. So we go to our disk. We double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. You want to set your opacity to probably around about 80% and your size to something around about sort of, uh, let's go to about 12%. We're going to go along here in a straight line a couple of times. Keep going until you pretty much erase the uh, sort of drawing a little bit from this side. Now, just remember, you've only masked it. You've not erased it, so don't stress too much. Bring the opacity down to 50% and the size up to maybe 15 and then lightly just sort of feather out the log a little bit, so blending it out. Likewise, let's blend out the tail. This is why I didn't want you to spend too much time in this sort of area. I just want to get rid of this bit in the corner. It's not managed to sort of really get rid of itself too much. So I just want to make sure that that's completely gone and then we fade it out. So lowering the opacity to 50%, just kind of blending this in, kind of fading it into our, um, into our background. So likewise, the log, Needs like a couple more coats here just to get rid of it, blending it in, fading out the very bottom of it. I'm gonna set it to 100% quickly and at 8% just to really make sure that the edge of the frame here is completely gone. And then I'm gonna set it a bit bigger again to so about sort of 18%, bring it down to 50 again and just kind of blend out the bottom area here. That's why I didn't want you to sort of stress in this area because we're framing it. Now, likewise, we're also going to go back down to the background here, the wash that we created, again, using your eraser and probably a, a size around about sort of 15% and probably about 90% maybe with the eraser. We're going to cut across here. We want to frame our design. So we're going to go across here a couple of times just to triple check. We're going to go up and down this edge as well. We're going to go up and down here. You can draw a straight line if you want and then just hold your pen just to make sure it's nice and straight. We're just framing our little design here. Once you've made sure you've got rid of the edges, you can then also go ahead and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Now that may or may not look quite nice. It's totally up to you if you want to go to that level. I personally quite like the look. It almost looks a bit more realistic. Um, you could just bring the opacity down of the second one if you want to, but it's totally up to you. Then you can go ahead and go up to your actions. You can go ahead and go to canvas and turn off your drawing guide so you get rid of the guide there. Now, what you can then do is what I recommend is go to your gallery, swipe the canvas to the left and duplicate it. So I'll do exactly that. Swipe it to the left, duplicate it. Go ahead then and open up one of them. Then go to your actions, go to crop and resize, and then bring this one across to your midpoint of your design. So roughly around about there, hit done. And then if we pinch with two fingers and we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. 
So I hope you enjoyed today's design. As always, make sure to tag me in your finished creations wherever you decide to share them. And if you want even more of these types of tutorials, I've done a Robin already over on my Patreon. And depending on when you watch this, there may also be another bird tutorial, which is out in May this year. So be sure to check that out over on my Patreon. Again, link is in the description down below. And if you want to get your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access to these tutorials and much, much more, hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll love this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.